first question. Okay. A physics student of mass 80 kilograms steps off a 200 kilogram rowboat at a speed of 2 onto a dock. Alright, so let me draw what's happening for you, okay? There's the ocean. There's the boat. <laughs> you couldn't be wrong already, I'm just drawing a picture. Okay, so uh, there's the ocean there. <laughs> and then there's the dock. So the two of them are at rest. And then what happens next? Um, this physics student. The heck, what way do I want to draw? How do I draw someone walking? Now, let's see. <laughs> there we go, okay. He's a. Uh, <laughs> he's jumping off. Right. So, anyway, uh, he's jumping off at a speed of um, 2 meters per second. Now, you might have noticed this before, but what happens is then the boat <coughs> moves backwards. So, let's look at conservation momentum. Uh, so, here, we'll call him the M1 and this will be the M2. So, M1 is what here? What's M1? Tell me. 80. Yeah, but say the, the student is the one. So 80. M1, U1. What's U1? Now look at the picture. The U1 at the beginning. Zero. Plus M2. U2. And what's U2? Zero. Okay. That's equal to M1, V1. What's V1? 2 plus M2, what's M2? 200, V2. So when you solve this, you'll get V2 equals uh, minus 160 over 200. So that's minus 16 over 20. That's minus, uh, what's that? Minus 16 over 20 minus, minus 0 0.8. Um, type in, uh, see about 160 over 200. Yeah. Yeah. So the boat moves backwards at this speed when the, 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 the boy steps off. Ah, it's because I asked for how fast, which yeah. means I want the speed. Yeah. So. So the speed is 0 0.8 meters per second. You don't like this question? You didn't like the story in the question. No. You like the picture, good. So am I right in thinking if you had trouble with number one, then you had trouble with number two? Okay. Do you think you could try number two now? Like what I could do is I could let you try number two and then I can do it on the, the screen here. Number two, the reason I say this is because number two is very similar to number one. In number two, you have a gun. So at the beginning, both are at rest. The gun is at rest and the bullet is at rest. What happens when the bullet leaves the gun? What happens to the gun? Yeah, it goes backwards, doesn't it? Can you see how similar that is to this story? It's actually the same problem. Except instead of a boy, it's a bullet. And instead of a boat, it's a gun. But it's the same principle. Can you try number two before I do it? And then we'll, we'll see. And you know what to do, Seba? You need a little help? Yeah. yeah.
Okay, um, George, do you think you have it? Hmm? You think you have number two done? No, I'll just check them back number one and then I need that thing to the numbers down. Okay. But I can move. You have number two done? Yeah. And is your answer match? Yeah. Good, good, good. Did you get your bank sorted? No, I have to get a letter from the school. So you didn't get it sorted on Friday? No. Kim, you got number two finished? And you get the same answer? Good, okay. So do you need me to do number two? Do you want me to do number two or do you want me to do something else? Ciao? Mm -hmm. I'll do number two? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Um, Matt, did you get number two done? Yep, okay. Okay, so uh, if you need to look up, this is what's happening. You have your shotgun, and this shotgun is two kilograms. And then you have your bullet inside of it, and it is 80 grams. Okay, and then what happens is the bullet comes out at 200 meters per second. So this is going to go backwards. So, M1, U1, plus M2, U2, equals M1, B1, plus M... Oh, sorry. What did I say M1 was? The bullet. M1, V1, M1, V1, plus M2, V2. So that means V2 would equal minus 0 0.08 times 200 over 2, which is minus 8 meters per second. So the answer is 8 meters per second backwards. is the answer. Okay, what what do we want to do next now? What's the what's the plan? You want me to do it or you want to try it or what's what's the idea? So maybe you just want me to draw the picture, and then you can try it. Perhaps, yeah? Do you need a minute to write that down? Yeah. You can guess, you can try and guess in the story who the people are. So you need to figure out a chemistry teacher that drives a Nissan Micra. Try and, try and guess who that is in the story. And then you need to think of a male cyclist who's 67 kilograms, and it's not me. I'm not 67. Try and figure out which teacher it is. <coughs> Not that that will help you with the calculation, but it's good to have a picture in your mind. Uh, okay, so let's have a look here. I'll draw it for you. So this is what's happening. It's basically, you have your car, and that's um, 1044 kilograms, and that's going at 50 kilometers per hour. So what would be the first thing you have to do? You'd have to convert it, yeah. And then you have here your cyclist, And that cyclist is 67 kilograms, going at 11 kilometers per hour. Now, oh, well, I'll, I'll draw the car with actually a bonnet. It's a car. So then after the collision, what happens is 
the cyclist and the uh, bicycle uh, are together with the car. So they move off together. So this is still 1044 and this is still 67. But now this is V and this is V. Because V1 will equal V2, which we can just call it V. So what question is this like? This is like my first example I did for you, where you have two trolleys and the tr two trolleys uh, click together. Okay. So I want to know uh, how far do they move off together. So this is true, you know, if you hit a cyclist, the car speed reduces slightly. This is not a surprise, right? It's hardly a surprise that when the cyclist lands on the car, the car moves a little bit slower. Uh, so what we want to do is calculate the sudden drop in the speed. So in other words, calculate the V. So if you look back at the first example, you can see how to do this one. Yeah, I, I have to give something in the story so that it doesn't seem like the teacher is deliberately trying to hit the cyclist. So that's why I put that in. You know, <laughs> like, you know, it's a foggy morning and a cyclist suddenly appears. Yeah, 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 because the, the car is behind the cyclist. Yeah. Do we think we're ready to see the answer? Who, who has an answer? I see people are still working, yeah. Okie dokie. Finish Seba or do we need a little more time? Alright. My answer is in Ken's power. 
Yeah, that would seem appropriate because the question originally was in kilometers per hour, you know. Uh, Kim, do you need a little more time or do you want to see it now? Yeah, no problem, yeah. I mean, if you haven't finished, there's no reason you can't start number four, and uh, I'll put the answer for number three now. Well, okay. Um, Ziba, were you able to convert this 50 into meters per second? Yeah, what did we get? 13.8. 13.8, yeah. And then what was the 11? 3.05. 3.05, we're all happy with that? Okay, good stuff, thank you. So, we have an M1, U1, plus M2, U2, yeah? Equals M1, V1, plus M2, V2. So when you clean this up, you should get basically this over 104, well, no, I won't do too much in one step. Um, does anybody have this combined into a single number? Five two nine two seven. Five two. Nine two seven. Really? One oh, no, 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 never mind. That's with my way in numbers for hours. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 146.1555. Okay, and then this one is. <coughs> is this one 1111? Yeah. V? So, divide. What do you get for V? 13? Oh yeah, 13. What? Yeah. 13. 13 point... 15. Uh, and that's meters per second. So when you convert that back, is that 47.6 kilometers per hour? Is it? Yeah, it seems like it should be a little bit less than 50. Close enough? Close enough. Not that close. No, uh, the 13.8 is one more step. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Grant. Grant? Is that okay or not okay, Kim? Why V1 and V2 are the same? The cyclist is on the car. So they're moving together at the same speed. Yeah. This is an example of a question where it's possible possible for V2 to be negative. Why am I saying that? Guys, are we all listening? Listen? Chow? Listen? Yeah, I'm saying this is a question where it's possible, possible, for V2 to be negative. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, or under. If you go over or under the car. So, uh, you know, it's good to think about this. Because sometimes you have to choose your answer if you have two answers, you know, so you have to say, could it be positive, could it be negative? So here the V2 could be negative. Could the V1 be negative? I don't think a cyclist could ever hit a car hard enough to make the car go backwards. Right? It doesn't seem possible. No, no, go forward. Yeah. Uh, it's because the 13.8 is actually 13 point something something. 
So if you were if you had one more if you had one more decimal place here, it would be actually oh. yeah. No, no big deal. So if I still would put them on three points, it's correct. Yeah, no, it's okay, but uh, Siba, um, I just think in the exam for calculations you should use one more uh, digit. You should have four digits in total. So like, I don't think it's exactly thirteen point eight, is it? 13.88, is it? Oh, it's a recurring, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it 13.88 on your calculator? 13.8. Is there a little dot on the 8? Yeah. That, eight, that dot means the 8 repeats. How's number 4 going? Uh, Matt and George, you started number 4, didn't you? Yeah. You got the 8 part? Yeah. Is it right? Yeah, go ahead, sir. How's number four going? Got about right? Okay. And deck? How's your number four going? Okay. You got what? For part A? Yeah. Ah. Is it a sign mistake? Yeah, it's just reviewing everything. Okay.
tub. Will we have a look at it? There's my skaters. So, uh, before the collision, M1U1, M2U2. So, we'll say the male skater, we'll call him one. So, uh, M1, 65, U1, 4, plus M2, U2, very good, very good, equals M1, uh, V1, we'll call it V, because their V1 and their V2s will be equal. Plus M2, which is 50, V. Right, so what's that? That's 115 V. Uh, somebody calculated this for me, please. 160. Okay, very good. So 160 divided by 115 is the answer. 1.39 meters per second. What went wrong, Siva? I, I divided the 115 Ah, you had it upside down. Okay. Now, part B. Show that the collision is inelastic. So what should happen to the kinetic energy here? Should be reduced. Should be reduced, yeah. So let's get the total kinetic energy first. So what's the kinetic energy at the beginning of the male? Yeah, a half times, good, four squared, plus a half, 50, minus two squared. So does somebody have that for me, maybe? 620 joules. Okay, now let's look at the total kinetic energy after the collision. So that's a half, 65, times 1.39 squared, plus a half, times 50, times 1.39 squared. What's that? 111.1. Okay. So therefore, um, it's inelastic because the total kinetic energy after the collision is smaller than the total kinetic energy before the collision. You don't seem happy with this. It's okay? Yeah. Together. Oh, here? Yeah. Ah, they hold hands. They're, you, you watch skating. You know, boy skater, girl skater, they come together. Ah, that sounds painful. No, 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 no. no. These are professional skaters, yeah, not amateur skaters. Oh, I see. You were picturing they were coming together and a bam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. 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 They uh, they move off elegantly together. Uh, I should tell you, it's it's a, it's a it's a thing in physics here. Like it's it's one of these problems in physics that they use when they want to tell the students that the two things stick together. So you have like a boy get skater and a girl skater, and the two of them uh, stick together. Uh, I think if you want to show that they crash into each other, I think you make it a boy skater and a boy skater, and the two of them just uh, like this. Okay, did we write this down? Yeah. Now, it starts to get harder, doesn't it? So look, what I'll do, guys, I think what I'll do is I'll just, I won't do number five, but I'll just show you the idea, the steps, okay? So you can have a, a picture of what you're to do. So what you have here is, uh, you have uh, a bullet, and a block on a string, okay? Now, for this part, you think of it as um, 
conservation of momentum. So this one has an M1U1 and this one has an M2U2, although the U2 will be zero. Okay? And then what happens is, uh, could you get that answer? Yeah. The bullet gets stuck into the block and they move off together. So this one is a little bit like our skaters, isn't it? You have V equals V1 equals V2. Yeah? Is, is that okay? You understand what's happening here? So you have, you have, you have the, uh, the block, the bullet comes along, collides with the block, and they stick together and they move together. Yeah? Now, then there's the second half. So what happens next is that this swings up to some height. I'll call it H. Now, that's not conservation of momentum anymore. That's a different type of problem. What type of problem is that? Uh, you could think of it actually as turning force because you have this turn in here. Um, there's actually something easier you could use than turning force. So I'll give you a little hint. This is moving very fast, right? When it reaches its maximum height, is it moving very fast? No, it's, it's at rest, isn't it? And I want to figure out what that height is. Not quite projectile because it's on a string. It's on a string. It's conservation of energy. Because what type of energy does this have here? Mm -hmm. Kinetic. Does it have potential? Not really, because we kind of imagine it at ground level. And then here in this picture, what type of energy does it have? Potential. potential. Why no kinetic? Yeah, so you could make this equation. Because you're trying to figure out what the H is in the story. So this story has two halves. So the first half is you've got to figure out the V by using conservation of momentum. And then the second half is you have to figure out the H by using conservation of energy. This is a classic physics problem. It's called the ballistic missile problem, or ballistic pendulum problem. It's a classic physics problem. It's in like every physics textbook. Um, and it's a good example of putting the two lessons together, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, okay? So, there's a couple of minutes left. If you don't get this finished now, I really want you to try very hard at home, and then we can do it in the tutorial later in the week. But try your best to do this one now. I believe in you. Can I close this picture?